Anytime when, if you have a church where the pastor is always on fire, fire, anytime you preach quietly, people think, oh, he's not, oh, he's not moved today. Not, not true. It's just that they, they are used to hearing in a certain pattern. Amen? So I want to do projecting teaching today. Possibly do it in the next one month. I just want to teach on vision. Amen? So my, my desire is to have you understand what is vision and what, what you ought to do as a person. When God has given a vision, let's have the PowerPoint. When God has given a vision, what you should do or what should be your role in that vision. In the vision, yes, we're going to look at this and show you all scriptures running with the corporate word vision, part one. Let's get into it. Okay. If you have pen, write down. The placement of any association, family, or church in the grand master plan of God is located by vision. Whatever you will become in life will be defined by the vision you have received. You will never become anything if you don't know the place of vision. Family will not become anything if they do not know the place of vision. Hello, somebody? Vision is having a supernatural insight to one's life. Do you have supernatural insight to where you're going or to where God is taking you? Hello, somebody? Vision is the path-finding tool in the hand of a believer, leaders, and or any association. Vision is the path-finding tool in the hand of a believer. Hello? In the hand of a leader, in the hand of any church, or any association whatsoever. <laughs> no family will go far without a vision. If you don't have vision to educate your children, you will not send them to school. You will think, that you will think school is not necessary. Hello, somebody. And when they grow up, they will not have a good job because you, the parent, did not have vision to send them to school. Hello, somebody. And... Uh, they will be also relying on you when they grow up because they, if they don't have a good job, they will always come in to knock on your door. So if you want your children to become a backbone to your family in the future, you need to dream to educate them. <laughs> One of the reasons America is a great nation today is because it's a nation of education. I was telling my wife the other day, Americans, uh, I respect them. Because if you look at the democracy and look at how they have run that country in the last 300 years, there has been continuity and the democratic, no democratic government has been scorched. The military are highly disciplined. <laughs> they don't overthrow democratic government. They have practiced this from the days of, you know, of George Washington in the last 300 years. Hello, somebody, or 200 years. Because these people are educated. Every, in, in every decade and century, they continue to strengthen their democracy based on tra transparency. Hello, somebody. So if you don't have vision for the future, you can go places. Hello? Vision is the pathfinding tool in the hand of a believer, right? So you've got to have it. For you to have it too, you need vision. Now, there are two kinds in my definition of uh, there are two kinds of vision. One is independent vision. And another is what corporate vision. When I say corporate, I mean community thing. Hello, somebody. Communion vision. When I say that this is, um, yesterday my, my um, daughter, when we went to Nigeria, uh, meet in a, with Nigerians have an independence. So every year they encourage the young people to write an essay. Last year she won, and she won $300. And this year she won $200 again. So when we are coming back home, I said to my daughter, I say, you remember, this project have paid off. Hello, somebody. She said, I said, now we have to split this money because I helped you also to put it. <laughs> I said, I say it was a corporate vision. She said, why that? I said, no, remember, you did the writing, but I helped you put it in media. I said, because I help you, so we've got to split this money. That was joking, but he, he really, she was concerned. She said, no, you can't. That is not true. I said, no, we have to split it. It's a corporate, it's a joint venture, and this venture have just paid. So give me my own share and take your own share. <laughs> so she turned around and said, but remember, your mom owed me, you owe me some money sometime. I said, oh, I said, how much are we owing you? 
I said, I thought I gave you some. She said, no, you gave me $20 remaining $80. I said, okay, you give me my share from this corporate venture, and I will pay you your debt. <laughs> I will pay you whatever I'm owing you, I'm going to pay off. She quickly turned around again and said, no, 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 no. <laughs> so corporate vision, you have independent vision, which you call your vision, hello, and you have a corporate vision like this church is a corporate what vision. It's not independent vision. But watch this, both, uh, both are always given to person and not to the people. But whether it be corporate vision or independent vision, it is always given to a person. Hello, somebody. Yeah. It's not given to a people. Even though a corporate vision is for the people, it's for the community. But once God gives it, he gives it to only one man. Hello, somebody. Let's keep going. Now, people like Abraham, Gideon, Paul... Cornelius, this name I find it difficult calling it. Can you call it? Cornelius. You guys are bright. <laughs> it bites my tongue. <laughs> and Daniel, we are all giving corporate what? Vision. But the vision for the assignment was solely given to each individual. Even though this man, we are all given a vision for the community, a vision for their nation, a vision for the, their family. But it was given to one person. Hello, somebody. Now, if you look at the book, I'm going to look at Daniel first. Now, we're going to go turn to the book of Daniel. Let me show you something. I got, I'm going to show you a lot of scriptures. Because I'm going to take time to teach this. It, it, it's going to take uh, about one month or more. So, and uh, I just wanted to be here because you're going to learn a lot from this. It's not meant to design to cause fire. It's designed to inculcate knowledge. Daniel, read, the Bible says, on the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of Great River, the Tigris. Keep reading. He said, I look up and there was a man dressed in linen with a belt of gold from afar around his waist. This is Daniel describing the vision he saw. He said, I look up and there was, his body was like topaz, his face like the brilliance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and feet like the gleam of polished bronze and the sand of his walls like this sand of a multitude. Him going, he, he says, that, what is, what is, and only I, this is my emphasis, only I, Daniel, saw the, the man who we are with me did not see it, but a great terror fell on them. They ran and hide. They couldn't handle the vision. In this scripture, Daniel described what he saw. He told us his father, he saw the vision of Jesus. And when the vision was given to him, we were told he was the only one who saw it. Because of time, I'm not going to read all this. In the book of Acts chapter 9, reading from 7. Let's just look at 7. Some of you know the story. Acts chapter 9 verse 7. Some of you know the story when Saul was going to destroy God's own people. Hello, somebody. Saul was determined to destroy believers. He was determined to cut down the disciples of Jesus Christ. You know? So he took letter from the prison. He was going to Damascus to arrange them and possibly to kill them. And so we were told why he was going to do that. The Lord met him on the way and blinded his eyes. Hello, somebody. And he was going with some people. But what did the Bible say? The man who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the sound, but seeing no vision. Are you there, somebody? So he was with people. He was going to arrange the disciples of Jesus Christ with people. But they did not see when he encountered Jesus. Hello, somebody. You can be living in one room, using one bedroom, using one kitchen. But your wife or your husband may not know when you have encountered God. Hello, somebody. They were with him traveling all the way to go and arrest, you know, God's own children. But when the power of God hit him on the way, hello, somebody. We were told they only saw or hear the sound, but they did not see the light. They did not hear any voice. They just hear the sound. But Paul knew that he encountered God. We also saw that Daniel, when he received that vision of Jesus Christ, in verse 7 of that Daniel, go back to verse 7, that's 7 here and 7 there, we find that he was the only one. Hello, somebody. Daniel chapter 10, written verse 7, he was the only one. The man who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the sun. 
only I, then it's not the vision. The men who were traveling with him did not see it. They did not watch. Did they, they did not what? See it. You know, but a great terror fell on them and they ran and hide. Now, that means anytime that vision Daniel received was not just for Daniel, it was for the people. Hello, somebody. The vision Paul received was not for Paul, it was for the people. But when that vision was given, the people with him did not see it. So it is possible that I'm seeing what you're not seeing. Oh, nobody's talking to me here. It is possible that your neighbors are seeing what you're not seeing. We may live in the same house. You could come to this church today and still go back the praise and the praise. Hello, somebody. But another person could come here and go back and say, Whoa, what a service. I enchanted God. In the same church, we have people who receive you know, packages of glory. Some people may come there and still go back broken, still go back and lack, still go back complaining because they are not seeing what you're seeing. <laughs> Say to somebody, I see what you don't see. Oh, is there anybody here? It is possible that you are in the same road with me to go, gotcha, but you don't see what I see. It is possible that we walk in the same company, but you don't see what I see. It is possible that I see a man who is going to be your man, but yet you abuse him or her because you don't see what I see. So once you start seeing what other people are seeing, you'll be thinking like them. But if you're not seeing like them, you will be thinking abnormal because you don't see what they see. Now you've got to understand for the fact that you, your eyes are open doesn't mean you see. People's eyes could be open, physically open, but spiritually they are blind. Am I talking to somebody? So you've got to understand that any time vision is given, my emphasis here see, is if, if any time community vision is given or corporate vision is given, it is, all, it is always given to one man. And, and we're going to see, there's a lot of scripture I could show you, but I can't go there now. But we will see why that vision was given. Okay, let me, let me show you this before I move on. Ask for postures, chapter 10. We're going to read from 3 to 6. Ask for postures, chapter 10. Three and six. Oh Lord, help me in no time. At about three in the afternoon, he distinctly saw what? In a vision, an angel of God who came in and said to him, An angel is about to talk to you. God is sending a divine visitation, a divine being, a divine voice to you and to your family in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He said, an angel came in and said to him, Cornelius, Cornelius, keep going, keep going. He said, looking intently at him, he became afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he told him, your prayers and your art of charity have come up as a memorial, as a remembrance offering before God. Ho, 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 ho. I say, your prayers have gone up to God. God have remembered your prayers. God have remembered your act of charity in the name of Jesus. He said, this thing you've been praying and believing me, it has come up to me. He said, keep going. He said, now send men to Joppa and call for Simon who is also named Peter. Are you there somebody? He said, he is lodging with Simon. He is lodging with Simon, a tenor whose house is by the sea. He said, your mi miracle is in the hand of this man called Peter. <laughs> Even though you've been praying and believing me, but I have logged your miracle. I've embedded your miracle, your breakthrough in the belly of this man. Send a man to Peter, my apostle. If he come, he will release what you never had before. In other words, every man got to connect with Peter. Hello, somebody. All that you need in life is not always in your own hands. You may have prayed a prayer, but God will use another person to unlock the blessing. That is why you've got to be relational. Hello, somebody. Now, what the, the, this vision that was given to Cornelius. Cornelius was the first Gentile man. You are a Gentile. I am a Gentile who is Hebrews by grace. We have now become the people of God by grace. Who we are cast away in the past. Who we are not supposed to be saved. Before the blood of Jesus Christ comes into the scene. A lot somebody. Yeah. So when Jesus came and washed everyone. For God so loved the world. 
So when he washed everyone with his blood, then he, said, he decided to, to, to release the vision to a Gentile man called Cornelius. Now was the vision that changed I and you. This single experience is what brought the gospel to the Gentile world. The first Gentile man that received the word beyond the nation of Israel is this man. So when God encountered this man, he said, I sent for my apostle. He's going to come and release what you never had before. So Peter came and released something he never had from that moment. The Gentile nation started speaking in tongues. In fact, if not for the goodness of, of Cornelius, you will not be speaking in tongues today. You will not be sitting here today. But God encountered him and his world changed. But read, watch this. This, this, we are, this was a vision that was going to change the whole world. But it was given to only one man. God is about to give you a vision that will change your world. I say it's about to give you a vision that will change your family. In the name of Jesus. So this vision changed the world. One man received it. And that person is you. I say that person is you. In the name of Jesus. Keep going. Let's get back to the, to the PowerPoint. So we, you see here now that anytime God is getting ready to change a nation, he gives a vision to one man. Hello, somebody. Anytime God is getting ready to change a nation, he gives the vision to change that nation to one man. And I have no doubt that here tonight, here this morning, are sitting men and women that will carry the torch of glory, torch of power, torch of anointing to the nations of the world. You may be sitting here today, you may not even know that you are the man God have anointed to change this nation. You are not as small as you think. You are not as, as ordinary as you think. There is something about you that is greater than you've ever perceived in your lifetime. So I believe you are that man that the hand of God is on. You are that woman that the hand of God is on. You will be the one that will open a business that will change the world. We have turned down. We have pack and save. We have a new world. Somebody opened it. What about Prince Ward? Am I talking to somebody? What about Prince Ward? Somebody opened new world. There will be Prince Ward. When I was in business, my business name was Prince Way. So now it's going to come alive. Oh, am I talking to somebody? My business name was Prince Way. There are some of you here that there's so much, so much, so much vision in the inside of you. God has stored so much in you. It's time to unlock it. I say it's time to unlock it in the name of Jesus. Now, just because a corporate vision was given to an individual does not make it his vision. Anytime God gives a corporate vision to an individual, it's not his, that individual's vision just because it was given to him. Are you there, somebody? Now, just because a pastor founded a church doesn't make mean he is an all-run or should do everything. For the fact that we came to this nation with a vision. When I came to this nation, I didn't come to look for money. But if the money come, I welcome it. I love somebody. I love somebody. I didn't come to do business. I came as a missionary. I came to plant. I love somebody. That doesn't mean it is my vision. I'm going to let you, I will show you why that vision was given to me. There is no need for me to be in this country. I love somebody. If not for you, I should not be here. Hello, somebody. I am here because of you. You put me in this. Oh, nobody's talking to me. I say, you put me in this. Now, well, and watch, let, let, let's move on faster. Now, whatever vision God has given you, it was given to you because somebody, somewhere, needs deliverance. Needs what? Protection. Needs healing. Needs salvation. Needs Finance and needs employment. Anytime a corporate vision is given to an individual, the reason is because if, if my wife worked with Fisher and Paco in the past, and the man that op she worked there for about three years, so the man that opened that company is uh, opened that company in response to the desire of my wife to have a job. Hello, somebody. 
if I open a company that we employ, that we employ 25,000 people, I should not think that that company is just for me to make money. It was actually given to me to employ the poor, the broken, the rejected. People that would need to send their children to school, put food on the table. You see, God loves people that employs other people. Don't open business just for you. Any business you've been, have imagination of employing a thousand people in the future. We are the businessmen here. I say, I bless you all. I bless you all. God will anoint your hands to begin to employ in the name of Jesus. Now, anytime God gives a man a corporate vision, the reason is because he's thinking of certain individuals in his community or her community to get a job. Hello, somebody. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no what vision, my people perish. Now, permit, permit me to say, where there is no vision, my people will not have employment. Hello, somebody. Where there is no vision, the people of God will not have employment whatsoever. So it takes a vision for them to have food on their table. When there is no vision, they will perish. And they will start begging and borrowing and start stealing. That's why God is a visionary God. And when he calls you, he gives you vision. So that you can empower your community and in turn empower yourself. Hello, somebody. Now, where there is no vision, the people perish. Did you see that? The people perish. But he that keep the law, you know, happy is he. Now, so you've got to understand that vision is not given to you just for you. A corporate vision is not given to you just for you. All right. In the Bible time, a corporate vision is given to certain persons because some people are in need or because God has the need. Hello. Now, I want to show you scriptures here. Please, I want you to pay attention. I will show you something, a few scriptures, I'm sure. God will use it to speak to you. Go to the book of Exodus 3, 7 to 12. Because oftentimes, we think that a particular vision belongs to the pastor. That is why you've never heard me use the word Exodus 3. We're reading from 7. We never hear me use the word my church. Hello, somebody. If you listen to all my preaching, you know, and 80% of our preachers are recorded and they are online. Hello, somebody. You will never hear any, anywhere. People, like, if somebody might use it for the sake of English explanation, for sake of, you know, using English, church of vision, but I hardly use it. I, for me, instead of me saying my church, I use the word our church. Because it has never been my church from day one. Hello, somebody. What is, the Lord said, said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt. Read with me. And I have heard them crying out because of their oppressors. And I know about their sufferings. He said, I have heard them cry. And I know what they are going through because of the oppressors. And I said, and I know about their suffering. God knows what you're going through. He knows what you are going through. I don't care how that problem looks like. I don't care how that pain looks like. I don't care what, you, what men have put you into women around the world. But if you trust him, he will deliver you. Yeah. He said, what is, he said, because I have seen their suffering. Because I know their suffering. He said, I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. So shall it be unto you. Yeah. And to bring them from that land to a good world and spacious land. That's where God is taking us. A land flowing with meat and honey. The territory of Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. He said, this is the territory I'm going to give to you. Now, watch that what he said. I have come down. Did you watch it? I have come down to rescue them. Now, we're going to see if God came down. Keep going. The Israelite cried out for help. The Israelite cry for help has come to me. Prince cry for help has come to me. I have also seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing Prince. Are you there, somebody? Yeah. Keep going. This is for you. Therefore, go. Therefore, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. 
I love somebody. So that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of where? Egypt. Are you there, somebody? In verse 8, we were told, God said, I have come down to deliver them. So I was thinking God was going to come down in person and say, yeah, who I am God. So he never came down, even though he said, I've come down to deliver them. Hello, somebody. When he came down, he came down in the person of Moses. Amen. Oh, you don't get it, somebody. Amen. He came down in the person of Moses. That is why we are told that men are God to men. Hello. When we say men, we are not just talking of men as a man, because in Bible there is no gender. Anytime Bible think of men, it's also talking of women. Hello, somebody. He said, therefore, I am sending you to Pharaoh, Moses, so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. He said in verse 8, I have come down to deliver them. Now in verse 10, he said, I am sending you. Yes. So why this keep going? Let me see. If I, he said, but Moses asked God, who, are, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Okay, I'm going to, let me stop here. Now, watch it there. The, the, the revelation here is, these people cried out. Moses never wanted to go to Egypt because he was a wanted criminal. He was a murderer. He lost somebody. He was comfortable taking care of sheep, rams, and bulls in the wilderness, the sheep of his father-in-law. As a matter of fact, he was settled with a beautiful woman. Oh, nobody dug into me, somebody. So he, he, he was enjoying right in the hands of his father-in-law, Rua. He was not dreaming whatsoever of going to Egypt because he was comfortable with his life. Yes. However, God went where he was, you know, you know in tending sheep and wrecked Moses' comfort zone and wrecked his plan and wrecked his life and said, now I'm going to take you out of what you're doing. I got a new mission for you. I've got a new business for you. I've got something that is bigger than what you are doing. Yes. Is anybody here? He yes. said, I'm going to take you out from tending sheep and shepherd to tend my own people. I must say, Lord, look for another person because my tenses are not good. Hello, somebody. I don't know how to speak. He said, look for somebody else because I am a stammerer. I can't speak very well. I'm not an eloquent speaker. I'm not an or oratory. So I can't really do this job. And God said, no, I created your mouth and I created your tongues. So once I call you, I will teach you how to speak. But what is, when you said that, where we started, we were told that the people cried out to who? To God. It wasn't Moses. Moses was a comfortable businessman. Oh, nobody's talking to me. Moses wasn't saying, I want to be a pastor. Send me to Egypt. Because he was even afraid of his life. He ran away from Egypt. Hello, somebody. He was totally comfortable. Fully comfortable. But God said, no, go back to the place you're running from. I have a work for you to do. So Moses went to Egypt. Not because he wanted to go. He went to Egypt because the people, God's own people, were crying out to God. And God said, I'm going to come down in the person of Moses. Oh, nobody's talking to me. He said, I'm going to come down in the person of Moses. Sometimes God comes down through you. You may not even know when you're helping some people, it is God inside of you that is extending that help. You may think it's you, but it is God himself walking through you. That is why anytime God speaks to you, you've got to obey. You may not think, once you miss out, once you do not obey, the anointing leaves you, God will stop speaking. Hello, somebody. And this, some of you, I say, oh God, I don't get dream anymore. I, I don't get vision anymore. I don't get trance anymore. But the Lord is saying, I gave you vision two years ago. You never carried it out. Mm -hmm. 
I gave you instruction two years ago. You never carried it out. Why do you want my, any, any new vision? Why do you want new revelation? I know if I give it to you, you will not do anything with it. Am I talking to somebody? So, he came there. Tell somebody he came there. Help me say he came there. He came down in the person of who? In the person of who? Because the people did what? Cried out. Is it because Moses was tried? So Moses went to Egypt. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Moses went to Egypt with whose vision? Because of what? The people. Oh, as a matter of fact, permit me to say, it was actually the vision of the people. Is there anybody listening? Moses went to Egypt with the vision of the people. Say the people. people. Now look at this. Judges 6, 6, 6 to 8. Before I, I judge 6, 6 to 8. Moses went to Egypt because of God's vision to deliver the people. And because of the people's vision to come out. They wanted to come out from Egypt. So it was their hard desire to be free from bondage, free from oppression, free from pain. So it was actually their vision to come out of Egypt. Hello, somebody. It wasn't Moses' vision to go to Egypt. But when Moses got to Egypt, they started mistreating Moses as though he came with his own vision. Oh. Oh. He, they started mistreating Moses. They were the one who cried out in verse 7. Say, Lord, we are suffering. We need help. Hello, somebody. So when Moses got here, got to Egypt, and was trying to confront Pharaoh to let them go, so Pharaoh decided to intensify their level. And they got angry and said to Moses, you are a thief, you are a liar, you are a bad man, you are an evil man. You came here and put sword in the hand of Pharaoh to kill us. Hello, somebody. But Moses had, no, had nothing to do with that mission. It was their mission. It was their desire to be free. Their vision. And then God heard their vision and decided to implement their desires through Moses. But when Moses got there, they almost rejected Moses. Moses was one of, this, uh, one of the, those prophets that really suffered in the hand of those he went to deliver. And that's how the Lord said to me, now, now, let me say, permit me to say this. When a pastor comes in a community, once a pastor shows up in your community, he did not come because he wanted, or because he wants to start something. He wants to be a pastor to, or, or to start a church. Anytime you see a pastor suddenly appears in any community, the reason that pastor, you know, appears in that community or was sent to that community is because somebody in that community was crying. This is biblical. Because somebody is saying, Lord, I need a good church. Somebody said, I need to hear. They say, Lord, I need to hear my spirit. Something is lacking. God, I need some healing. Uh, God, I need a revelation of what? I'm tired. I lost someone with a mundane thing. I need something new. And then God knows if he did not send Moses, they will turn away from him. So he decided to send their Moses in their community. But unfortunately, anytime Moses, you know, visits or begins, starts something in that community, people will start fighting him, start condemning him, start rejecting him. And they are saying, Moses, your church, your church, will not come to your church again. This is, that is why I say the church is not my church when I had this revelation. The church is your church. I am here because you cried out. Somebody tired. Is anybody tired? Amen. I am here because somebody cried out many years ago. I don't know who prayed me into New Zealand. Oh, no one is talking to me, somebody. I said, I don't know who prayed me into New Zealand. It could be Pastor Bill. I love somebody. No man of God, genuine servant of God, ever goes to start something in any community if he was not called by the voices of the people. In that community. It's biblical. Is there anybody here? Okay, watch this. So Israel became po poverty. I don't like this translation. 
Oh, are you able to use KJV? Let me see what she says. Imagine, and this Israel was greatly impoverished because of the of the Midianites. Hello, somebody. The Midians made them poor. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Watch this. Keep going. Keep going. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. Are you there? Yeah. Keep going. Now, that the Lord did what? Send a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thou says the Lord of God, Lord God of Israel. I brought you all from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Now, let's leave it there. They cried out because they were being made poor. Anytime they plan something, the Midianites will go and pull it away, pull it out, have veg there, you know, their farm, their grains, and, their, and whatever they have, you know. So the, the Midianites will go there and have veg it, have veg everything in their farm and made them poorer. So they started crying and said, God, we are doing our best, but the enemy is ripping us off. We are seeing our baby demons in this country is fighting us. Lord, what can we do? And then the Bible said, because of their cry, God sent a prophet. So God never sent the prophet to any community, to any nation, to any city, to any family without the crying out of the people. Hello, somebody. And, but the problem is, in most cases, whenever God sends a prophet, back to Project Church, whenever God sends a prophet, the people tend not to know. And the prophet was sent, not because, hello, somebody, not because of the prophet, but because of them. And that's why Jesus said, you did not know when your Messiah came to you. Hello, somebody. When the women of Jerusalem was crying, and Jesus cried, looked at them and said, You women of Jerusalem. He said, You are. You, you, you don't even know. You are just crying. He said, You're going to cry more. He said, Because you don't know that your Messiah has been sent to you. And said, Because you don't know, you mistreated him. He said, When this Messiah is gone, you will see hell. Look at what has happened to Jewish nation in the last probably hundred years. A lot somebody. In no nation today you will not see a Jew. They were about four, about how many about six, six million Jews were exterminated in Hitler Germany many years ago. A lot somebody. You see you see Jewish you see Russian Jews British Jews a lot South African Jews a lot somebody New Zealand Jews anywhere you go a lot somebody. They are scattered around the world. Because Jesus said, look, I came and you rejected your life. He said, I'm sorry because you will be touched around. Hello, somebody. So sometimes a minister comes into a city, Judges 5.23, let me see Judges, into a city, but the city rejects the minister. The people reject the minister. Hello, somebody. Some of us that came from outside, from other nations to minister. Sometimes, most of us are rejected by our, even our own community people. Because I have heard somebody say before, if you're a pastor, why did you come to our brother? You should have been in Nigeria. Hello, somebody. He said, you come to make money. Most people think if you're a foreign, a foreign pastor, especially my immediate community, they think you came because you're looking for money. But they did not know people like um, Daniel ministered in Israel. Sometimes when the people scatters, God sends the prophet in order to help them not to worship another God. And oftentimes the people do not even know when that prophet has come. And they reject the prophet and remain in their bondage, remain in their suffering. Many people that are poor today or that are going through mess are in mess because they have missed out the man or the woman God has sent to deliver them. Hello, somebody. That was a, I heard this story, and it's a genuine story in my country. I know, I know of the, that this Catholic father, Reverend Father, he was a powerful man. And this, this couple came, you know, at that time, they, they, they managed to have a monthly program. It's well known in the country. They came seeking for a child. 
and somehow a, 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 a dating you know, child went to sit closer to him, to her and the husband, and they, it's like they chased the baby away. And then when they got there and said, the Reverend Father, pray for me, the man of God, is, I said to them, you came to look for baby. They said, yes. He said, but the baby came to you now, and he chased the baby away because the baby is dirty. Hello, somebody. Many people today do not know when their prophet have arrived. They do not know when God placed them in a church that is their church. So when they come, because of one little thing here and there, other people's attitude, they take off. I know people that started with us. Some of them are still hovering. He knows. Some of them are still, they don't have a permanent church now. For nine years, they are still unstable. Some would have become something in the church. But because they did not know when their prophet you know, was sent. Let's somebody. So the church back to project. Okay, let me read here. The Bible says, Cause ye may rose. Say the angel of the Lord. What is Cause ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof. Because they came not to help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. I don't want to go into the context of this scripture. I'm looking at the text. That means if you take the text alone, it means God Himself need a helper. Did you see that scripture? It said because they did not come not to the help. Use another translation. They did not come to help the Lord. He said, cause Meroz. Meroz is assumed to be a city. He said, says the angel of the Lord. This story was when um, Deborah was fighting. And Lord said, was fighting the Gentile nation. But let me not waste time there. Says the angel of the Lord, basically cause her inhabitant. For they did not come to help the Lord. To help the Lord against the mighty warriors. So God is always looking for a helper. That is why anytime God calls you, he expects you to respond to it. If you're done, he will move and choose another person. So a, a pastor is a helper. A pastor is an extension of the healing hand of God. I was doing my own stuff. I wanted to be a great businessman. I was a business icon guy, a business guy. I love to do business, and I have skill in doing business. I love somebody, but God came and wrecked my vision. I wanted to build an empire so I can sponsor the kingdom of God. But God not him, wrecked everything I was doing and said, come and help me in New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, nobody's talking to me. Nobody's talking to me. He said, come and help me in New Zealand. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Amen. Remember, this is not the first church I pastored. I've been pastoring in Korea for years. I started assisting in Nigeria and then went to pastor in Korea and then come to this country. Hello, somebody. I've been pastoring for the, over, over the last 20 years. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now, but I, if you leave me alone, I, I am the firstborn, you know, five, five children, you know, six children, five boys and one girl. My father died August 10, 1990. So all those boys, they were like on my shoulder. Hello, somebody. My house was a military house. Hello, somebody. When you have five boys, you're dealing with soldiers. So if my mother, when my father died, my mother looked at me and said, you're not just my wife, my, my son now. You are now my husband. She's trying to say the responsibility of this family is on your shoulder. Amen. So I was determined to leave the family you know, from ashes. You know, to help my family. But the Lord came into, in the midst of what, was I, what I was doing, and wrecked my plan and said, come and become an extension of my hands. So I responded to that. Because I wanted to help the Lord. I don't want to be a curse before God. So many people today are cursed because they don't want to help the Lord. Hello, somebody. Do you know that you may buy a food with your money? You go to grocery, grocery shop, buy a food, you know, buy some, you know, um, food items. But, but the Lord said, you're driving home. God said, go and give it to your neighbor. If you don't do it and eat it, you'll be eating a cost food. Hello, <laughs> somebody. That is how God will help your neighbor. God helps your neighbor through you because you are the extension of the hand of God here on earth. Some of you are sleeping on me. I, I don't know why. Am I teaching good this morning? I thought I'm teaching good. Don't sleep on me. Hello, somebody. I was some clothes. 
So there are things God has called you to do. I am doing what God shall call me to do. And if I'm doing it, I don't even care who, even if, if my wife didn't support me, if she doesn't support me, I should not be mad with her because she wasn't there the day God gave me this vision. She, even though she was there, she may not even see when God is speaking to me. <clears throat> Sometimes I have some revelation I don't even tell. I just leave it waiting for the right time. Even your, your closest, cl closest brother friend have right to say, we don't want to support you anymore. The reason is because when you receive the vision, they did not say it. They were not there. They may be there, but they had a sound and not just the voice. So many people, they have just heard the sound. But they don't, they don't, they didn't hear the real voice. And that is why they are critical of what you're doing. They are not supporting you. The reason is because they did not hear directly from the Lord. The reason you must be more persuaded to do what you're doing is because you hear from God. Am I talking to somebody? It is too late for the devil to talk me out of what God has called me to do. The reason is because I encountered God. Yeah. Some of you that jump in and jump out, the reason is because you did not really encounter God. Mm -hmm. If you encountered God, you will not dump what you're doing because you know no matter what happens, God is going to show up. Yeah. Hello, somebody. God is about to show up in your life. You may be going through challenges. You may be going through pain. You may be going through hell. But if God encountered you, he will rescue you in Egypt. I say he will rescue you in Egypt in the name of Jesus. If you send me to this Egypt, Lord, you will keep me going. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. But the question is, did you send me? Did you send me, Lord? If you are the one that sent me to Egypt, it doesn't matter what Pharaoh is doing. All I know, I'm going to come out with the people. Am I talking to somebody? I will not only come out with them, I will come out with their rams, with their bulls, everything they own. I'm going to come out with it. In the name of Jesus. Your Pharaoh may have re reneged his promise. Your Pharaoh may have played on you. But what Pharaoh did not know, I came to Egypt with an anointing. I came with new anointing. I came with new fires. That anointing is not running dry. Because God is backing me up. So there is somebody, God is my backer. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus. So Pharaoh may have played on you and refused to let you go. But he did not let you go. But your God is still with you. I say your God is still with you. In the name of Jesus. If he asks you to go, he will keep you and he will deliver you. Can we come and help me? I say if he asks you to go, PowerPoint, he will keep you. And he will deliver you. When he asked you to go, he did not promise you there will not be trouble. He did not promise you there will not be challenges of life. He knew there will be challenges of life. But he has also promised, I will keep you in this journey. I will save you in this journey. No matter what you're going through, I will be there with you. He promised Jacob when he was on his way to Padam Aram. He said to Jacob, I will watch over you. And I will be with you. If you go through the fire, I will be there to you. But he did not promise Jacob that he wasn't going through the fire. He did not say, I will keep you away from fire. He said, but if you go through the tunnel of fire, I will keep you. And I will watch you. And I will make sure that you are not consumed. Because I am the one that sent you. There is somebody God have sent me. There is somebody God have sent me. No matter what the devil is doing, he said, I will be there for you. There are some of you in this church this morning that is going through hell. You are crying out every night. Nobody will understand what you're going through because they have not been through what you've been through. You may share with them, but they will not feel it. Even though they feel it, they may not empathize with you. Only you and God knows what you've been through. But the Lord is saying, I should let somebody know. If you go through the fire, I will be with you. If you go through tunnel, I will be with you. If you go through the grave, I will be with you. If you go through hell, I will be with you. 
I don't care the bullet they are shooting on you, but I came here to announce to somebody that bullet is going to miss you. It's going to miss you. You will not die where your enemy die. I'm talking to somebody because he sent you to Egypt. It was not your plan to go to Egypt. It was not your dream to go back to Egypt. You went to Egypt because God called on you. You went to Egypt because God wrecked your business. You went to Egypt because God said, Son, come and go to Egypt. In fact, when the Lord called you, I heard you saying, God, I'm not going because I can't speak very well. I heard you saying, I'm not going because I'm not educated. I heard you saying, God, I'm not going because I'm not sophisticated. I'm not a cream citizen. But the Lord said, I choose to use somebody that is not cream enough. I choose to use somebody that is not sophisticated enough. I choose to use somebody that does not believe in he, his, in herself or in himself. God choose to use you because he know he will keep you. If you follow God, he will keep you. Because God have a keeping power. Am I talking to somebody? Help me talk to your neighbor. Give somebody high five. Say to them, God have a keeping power. Say to them, God have a keeping power. Yaka pa yaka. God have a keeping power. When he sends you, he keeps you. When he speaks to you, he maintains his word. He watches over his word to fulfill it. He said to Jeremiah, what do you say? He said, I see an almond tree. He said, you have well said because I watched my word to fulfill it. It was me that gave you that word five years ago. And I told you that if you go through the fire, I will be with you. I never told you that you're not going to go through the fire. I told you before you started that I will be with you. Now you're going through the fire and you're saying, God, I thought I'm a Christian. I thought I pay my time. I thought I go to church. But the Lord said, daughter, I told you when you go through the fire, I will be with you. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Lord. He never said to you, you will not go through the fire. He said, Father, the fire will make you a better man. The fire will make you a better woman. The fire will make you a refined being. Almost every president in America lost election. They lost somebody. They lost somebody. Maybe they lost a, a governorship election. They lost the election of going to the Senate before they finally became a president. Abraham Lincoln lost the election many times. Reagan lost the election in, in his, as a candidate of, of, of the Republican Party before he finally became. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Almost everybody. Uh, Nixon lost the election about two, three times before he became a president. Some of you are saying, God, I lost it again. He said, yes, I told you, you will lose it, but I will keep you. Yes, Lord. <laughs> When you lose it, God refines you. Amen. When you lose an election, God builds you Amen. up. Whatever you've lost in your life, God is about to refill you, Amen. replenish you, re empower you Amen. in the name of Jesus. You, Jesus. I'm actually a better man because of the things I lost yesterday. I'm actually a better hey, man hey, because of the things yeah, I went yeah, through. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I never went through through fire, when we started this ministry, I can't manage it now. But the Lord taught me on time. And when I was going through hell, I called my friend. I said, I'm going through hell. The people are too hard for me to pass. I don't know what the devil is doing. And he listened to my complaint. He said to me, man of God, I am actually happy for you. I said, why are you happy for me? He said, I'm happy that you're going through that now. Am I talking to somebody? I called him and I needed consolation. I said, Lord, the church is on fire. And the devil is attacking us every day. And there's a rebellion all over the place. And after listening to me, he said, man of God, I'm actually happy for you that you're going through this at this time Amen. of your life. Amen. You're going through this in the inception of the church. If you do not go through it now, you will mess up in the future. Some of you are going through hell because God is building you for tomorrow. Amen. I said, God is building you for tomorrow. Amen. I said, God is building you for tomorrow. Amen. Is there anybody here that God is building? Yes, is there anybody here that God is building? Yes. 
Is there any man here that God is building? I came to let you know that God Almighty have allowed that to happen because he's making you the man or the woman he has called you to be. In the name of Jesus. But the good news for somebody today is somebody is coming out. Coming out from that pit. Coming out from that hell. Coming out from that disgrace. Coming out from that pain. God, you sent me to Egypt and I will not die in Egypt. Oh, nobody is talking to me. <laughs> I said, I will not die in Egypt. Help me talk to your neighbor. I said, Neville, he sent you to that age. And you're not dying there. Die. 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 You will crush Pharaoh die. and all his cars. You will crush Pharaoh and all his cars. He will cr- you will crush Pharaoh and all his cars in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody turn into prayer. Turn it to prayer. Ask God to open your eyes. Your Moses may be on the way. Your your Moses may be here now. Your Moses may be in your room with you right now. You may not even know if your eyes is not open. I the Lord to help you. In the name of Jesus. The God help me to know when you send my Moses. To know when you send my Gideon, yes, Lord, help me. Help me not to blow it up. Help me not to mess it up. Yes, Lord, help me. Oh, love, oh, secret. Yes, Lord, help me. Somebody turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Say, Lord, do something in my life. Lord, do something in my life. Open my eyes. Show me my Moses. Show me my Gideon. Open my eyes. <coughs> Somebody pray that prayer. God have sent your Moses. God have sent your Gideon. Jesus. Cause me to accept that vision. Some of you are saying, God, go give that vision to another person. Father, go give it to another person. But the Lord said, no, I want to give you this vision, baby, because through you, I will change the world. Through you, I will change the world. Through you, I will change the world. Somebody cry out to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we cry out to you. Open our eyes. Give us wisdom. Wisdom that is greater than ours. Open our eyes and see the future. Jesus, do something new in our lives. Do something new in our, in our family. Do something new in our understanding. Do something new, Jesus. Somebody pray. Yes, Lord. No. Somebody cry out to God. Say, God, I want to recognize my Moses. God, I want to recognize my Moses. God, I want to recognize my Moses. My Gideon. I want to recognize your voice. When that vision comes, I want to recognize it, Lord. Jesus. Do something new. Jesus, do something new. Somebody receive your vision. Receive your vision. Receive your vision. Receive your vision. Receive grace to recognize when God is speaking to you. Receive grace to recognize when God is speaking to you. Receive grace to recognize when God is about to use you. Receive grace to recognize the voice of God.
Lion of we Judah. We worship you. We worship you, O Lord. I know we are, we've run out of time, I understand, but time is in the hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hand. Lord, we ask that these hands be filled with vision. Lord, I ask that these hands be filled with glory. Lord, I ask that these hands be filled with honor. Lord, I ask that these hands be filled with package. May everyone in this church become useful. May everyone in this church rejoice. May you have an advance of glory, of power, of favor, of prosperity, of healing, of vision. May God give you something that will change your life, change your family, change your world forever in the name of Jesus. Father, as we celebrate the anniversary of this church today, I pray that somebody in this church will celebrate an anniversary of something good. You will celebrate an anniversary of something glorious. Amen. You will celebrate an anniversary of something joyful. You, in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will commit a vision in your hand. Amen. A vision that will forever change your world. Amen. A vision that will forever change your imagination. A vision that will forever change you beyond your widest dream. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for light. I pray for light. May the Lord lighten you up. Amen. May God show you what others are not saying. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I say may Jesus show you what others are not saying. Amen. In the name of Jesus. May you be the next solution giver. Amen. The next problem solver. Amen. Wherever you are, I decree over your life that you will be the one that will solve Amen. the problem of your community Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, as this ministry is changing life in this part of the world and solving problems, so I ask you today that as many that are under this covering, as many that are under this roof, I pray that your life will notice significance. I say you will notice significance. In the name of Jesus, you will live a life of significance. A life of importance. A life of honor. A life of power. And a life of dominion. As you live here today, I cause everything that, that, that is pursuing your life. I cause any voice that has risen against you. Any voice that has vowed that you will never rejoice. I hereby cause those voices. I hereby curse those voice in the name of Jesus. I decree you are being lifted. I decree you are rejoicing. I decree you are being celebrated. I decree that your name shall be heard. Your name shall be heard. Your name shall be heard in the name of Jesus. Your name will be written on the sand of life. Your name will be written in the marble. On a marble, your name will never be deleted from the history of man. When they write the story and the history of people that have made him part, you shall be there. I say you shall be there. Amen. I say you shall be there. Amen. When they mention 10 men that are, that are changing life in your community, your name shall be mentioned. Amen. May you live here today with a fire of glory. Amen. Fire of healing. Amen. Fire of inspiration. Amen. Fire of vision. Amen. You shall not be cut off. And you will not die before your time. Father, the, the, your world says in the book of his Hosea chapter 3 verse 13. He said by a prophet, God delivered Israel. And by a prophet, he cared for them. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, I stand as your prophet. According to Hosea chapter 3 verse 10, the Lord brought Israel from Egypt by a prophet. And, and, and Israel was tended by a prophet. My Lord and my God, I speak prophetically that your people are tended, your people are cared for, your people are preserved, your people are honored, your people are growing, Man. business difficulties are destroyed Man. in the name of Jesus. Hey. Marriage difficulties and, and neutralize. Amen. Walk into something that is bigger and greater than you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let it just shout. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you praise. Give somebody a high five. Let them know that you are blessed. Say it prophetically. Say it prophetically. Let them know. Say, I am blessed. Say, neighbor, I am blessed. I am going up. I am not going down. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want to quickly share the grace. Today we've really gone, we've done, it's a bit 